This is the second video on my new DIY incremental circle jig. In this new video, I'd like to show you some practical examples and projects I can do with this jig. In the second half of this video, I'll show you how to build the jig. I'm going to try to cut a round cutting board with end grain without the need to drill the board to cut the circle. To do this, I'm going to use a piece of acrylic and drill a hole with the same diameter as the head of the bolt I will use as rotation axis. Now I'll use the jig itself and the bandsaw to shape the acrylic into a circle. I'm going to replace the bolt I'll use as rotation axis with a shorter head. The head cannot jut out from the acrylic itself or the piece we will use as a base. I have to adjust the jig to the desired radius and make the cut. I'm going to mark the center of the kitchen table and use this mark as a reference to stick the acrylic on with double-sided tape. The last step is to adjust the jig again with the desired cutting radius, adjust the T-stop slot and make the cut. When trying to cut the table I realized that with such a small blade I won't be able to cut wood this thick, so I swapped the blade with a larger one. Still, it's difficult for the saw to cut a circle in a 45mm thick workpiece with end grain and with a relatively small radius, but little by little I get it done. I think the best thing to do in these cases is to mark the circle on the board and cut by hand, without using the jig. It's time to finish the job with the router table, but I've encountered a new issue. With the router in its highest position, I can't mill a piece this thick. At some point I should make a new lift system for this workbench that would let me lift the router by about 30 millimeters more, but today I'll have to make do and use the Portable Workshop's router table. The first step is to move the board till it touches the router bit. Remove the board and place the T-stop about 1mm away from where the T-slot slider is. Now I turn the rod to move the slider back a few millimeters and place the board again. Finally, all I have to do is turn the threaded rod in the opposite direction until the T-slider touches the T-stop again. The cutting is smooth but this bit is damaged and leaves some marks on the edge of the board. I adjust the T-stop again to more or less 1mm away from the slider and repeat the same steps.
Now, with a round nose bit, I'll try to mill a groove to hold juice when I'm using the cutting table. This time I'll use a clamp to hold the table while I lift the router. I think I've achieved a decent result, but I'd like to make this groove a little deeper, so I'll do the steps once again. All that's left to do is unstick the acrylic, sand the board, and apply some pure linseed oil. As you have seen, it's quite easy to make circular pieces with this jig without the need to drill the workpiece itself, using a base that's stuck to the workpiece where you need to cut a circle. I'm planning to make two or three more acrylic pieces with different radiuses, so that I can cut circles of any diameter in the same way. I'm also going to screw on a couple of handles so that I can grab this table more easily. This jig will be perfect to do projects like this cutting table safely and accurately. I'm going to show you how you can build this DIY incremental circle jig. First of all we have to cut the aluminum plate to size so that we can make all the T-slot aluminum pieces we need. I'll use a blade to cut aluminum and make the cut in two or three runs. I'll also use the table saw to make the necessary rabbits. I attached a piece of MDF to the fence with clamps to make this easier. I cut the piece a few tenths of a millimeter bigger than necessary, and then finish the job with files and sandpaper. It's important to make these pieces as accurately as possible, to ensure the jig works properly. With the bandsaw, I'll cut the four T pieces to size. I'm going to mark the positions of all the holes by checking the plans. I have to thread some of them, so it's important to choose the correct drill bit for each hole. I'll start with the slider. First I'll drill the three holes that will act as rotation axis. Now I drill the hole for the threaded rod. The hole must be as plumb as possible. I'll use the outer part of a vise to align the piece with the drill bit. It's time to thread the holes that need it. Here it's also important to ensure they're plumb at all times. I just realized that with this threaded tab, I can thread the entire length of the slider. I'm going to make its hole bigger until the halfway point on one end with a bigger bit, and then thread only the other half. In this case, I'll use the column drill to ensure the thread is plumb. Now I'll cut the three pieces of plyboard I need. I'll be using birch plywood. Also, with a table saw, I'll cut some grooves for the aluminum profiles.
I'm going to join the three pieces of plywood together using wood screws, although I could use wood glue here as well. With the bandsaw, I'll cut the resulting piece to size, making sure the blade doesn't touch the screws I used to join the pieces. Also, with a table saw, I'll cut another 2mm deep dado for the jig slider. I can use it to remove and reinsert it more easily when necessary, for example, to use the jig on some other tool. I attached the aluminum profiles to the jig with screws, and now I've thought about installing a 1mm thick metal plate to the bottom of the T-stop slot. This way the headless bolt in this piece won't damage the jig's miter channel whenever I had to lock it. The final step is to assemble the entire mechanism of the jig, and that will be all for today. Thank you for watching this video until the end. See you soon.